Hi, I'm Marty from Spring Ahead Media Solutions. Today I'm going to be going over all of the terminology for how MailChimp organizes your audience and your contacts. This will be an ongoing series as there's so much to talk about here. So don't forget to subscribe, give this a thumbs up so that other people can find it. Today we're going to be going through audience, tags, groups, segments, archive, and delete. So first is audience. Your audience is a self-contained bubble that houses all of your contacts. If you just started your MailChimp account, you will have one audience. And ideally that's how MailChimp mm -hmm. wants you to set up your account is with one audience. And the audience name will be this here, Spring Ahead Media Solutions dash demo. If you have more than one audience, this will be a drop down menu here and you will be able to access your multiple audiences. Um, the only time you would need more than one audience is if you have two lists that should never cross paths. So this is good if you are running two separate businesses, if you have a business with a consumer side and a business to business side, then you may want two separate audiences. Otherwise, you want to keep everyone in the same pool and we're going to use our other tools to label them and sort them. Each audience has its own unique data. So the contacts that live in this audience are not affected by any other audience. If someone unsubscribes, they unsubscribe from this audience. All of your branding information, all of the fields and everything, anything that you find in the settings menu, which I'll go through in another video, are unique to this audience. Next, we have tags. Tags are labels that go on your contacts and each contact can have any number of labels. They can have up to 50 labels. This is one of the ways you can make a list within your list. You can use them for sorting. So I have a couple of tags here. You can send an email just to the people who have a tag or to everyone except the people who have a tag. Tags are often used as a way to note where those contacts came from. If you're importing a list from a certain event or a certain location, they can be used to mark if someone is a lead or a current contact, what type of information they're interested in, how they've interacted with your email campaigns, any of that information that you would want to use to be able to sort them, you can use tags for, and tags are totally internal. So your contact will never see what tags are associated with them. If you do want your contacts to have the ability to opt into a group or opt out of a group, you'll use groups for that. You're going to find your groups here under manage contacts and groups. And I've created one here already. Groups will have a heading and then multiple options beneath it. And you can choose to have them public or have them hidden and they can live on a sign up form. So if I want to find out what type of services my potential clients are interested in, I can have a sign up form where they opt in and out of these. Also, when you create a group, you can decide whether those options are check boxes, meaning they could check many of them, radio buttons where they can only do one, a drop down where they can only do one. These groups will also show up in your preference center. So if they click the update my preferences link at the bottom of your email, they will be able to adjust these. And now segments is how we're going to sort our data. Segments are an active search tool. So you can set them up and save them, but when you run them, they will be whatever the current data is. So let's try it out. All right, I'm just gonna call mine demo. Set up some of our criteria for our search here. You can use this tool here to save the searches. You can also use segments right in your um, email campaigns. When you go to the to field, you can run exactly the same segment here. So we can search using our tags, whether they do or do not have a tag. We can search within our groups, whether they are in a group or if, or if they have to be in more than one group at the same time or excluding people who are in groups. We can search any of your data fields. So if you're bringing in information where you have a field that says like client status, you can search for anyone whose client status says current. We also have date added. Maybe you have sent out an, an update email last week, but more people have been added since. You can just contact the ones who've been added more recently, signed up source where they came from, and then campaign activity. This is one we use very often. We will often resend an email to anyone who did not open it. So I can pick any of the last emails or a specific one. 
And perhaps I want to send to anyone who did not open that last email and is tagged YouTube examples. So now I'm going to run that segment. Six people showed up with that information. I'm going to save the segment and I have it right here. As my, and then I have everyone who falls within that criteria, all of those six folks. And if one of them were to open that email today and I were to run this segment tomorrow, it would show up differently because this is an active search tool. Last, we're gonna talk about archive and delete. Archive is this baby right here. Archive will take your contacts, take them out of this contact number and put them to the side, which means that MailChimp will no longer be charging you for them. We do this very often with unsubscribed contacts, but you can also do it with ones that aren't engaging or with ones that have some other issue. Um, and were they to resubscribe or were you to re-import them again, they will be moved right back into your subscribers and with all of the data that they had with them before. And finally, we have delete. I'm gonna go into Oprah's contact here and say remove contact. You do not want to delete your contacts. This is the warning that you will get before you do it. Archive will save your contact and their data. They can be added back in any time. If you permanently delete a contact, you as the owner of your account cannot add them back in again. If they went through a sign up page, they could be added back in again, um, but you cannot add them back. So there's all of these warnings for good reason. That is the basics of MailChimp's audience organization tools. If you need more information, I will have more videos coming out on how to add and remove tags, how to move people in and out of groups, working with your signup forms, how to consolidate audiences. If you do have multiple audiences, what are the best ways to get them all combined so they're still labeled the way that you want, but you're not being charged double. There's a lot more to learn. Um, don't forget to subscribe again, please. Go ahead and click any of the other videos and I'll see you around.